It's been eight years since the word Hyperloop entered the public consciousness, having arrived here straight from the back of a 50s sci-fi novel. Vacuum tubes stretching between cities with pods shuttling passengers at up to 650 miles per hour sounds like a fantasy. But in fact, several companies are already working to make this a reality in our lifetime. Now, Virgin Hyperloop is one such company, one that in November 2020 was able to run the first crude Hyperloop test in Nevada. It turned up at this year's virtual South by Southwest conference to talk about the future of its passenger journeys. Earlier this year, it released a concept video exploring how its stations would be built with a series of piers for people to access individual pods. Once on board, these pods would join together with others to form trains, which then zoom through the vacuum tubes at high speed. John Barrett is the CEO of Teague, a design firm which has been working with Boeing to create aircraft cabins since 1946. His team was involved with the creation of the new Hyperloop concept cabin. And while this cramped pod, which is capable of seating 17 people at a time, doesn't look anything like Virgin's upper class airline cabin, it certainly feels very similar. So I think we see so often in transportation, and frankly, any form of future, even near future, future vision, there's a great tendency for designers to go all uh, Tron-like with the interiors, right? Or Star Wars. Um, and we didn't want to do that with this interior. We felt that, remember, we're trying to build trust in a brand new form of mobility that can travel up to a thousand kilometers an hour in, in an unusual environment. So we felt that absolutely the wrong thing to do would be to create a Star Wars interior for another vision of the future. So we wanted to have an interior that was welcoming, um, again, more akin to hospitality than transportation. Joel Beckerman, who is the founder of Man Made Music, said that another element of the design was to create a new sonic landscape because after all, there is no sound in a vacuum. So his mission was to create something entirely new. It's really interesting when you think about the history of transportation. It, those sounds have always been foisted upon us. Uh, combustion engines sound a certain way. Horse-drawn carriages sound a certain way. With Hyperloop, it's really a, the first opportunity, I think, in transportation to actually create sounds that don't exist in, in the actual experience, but are there specifically to create better experiences for people. Sarah Lucian is Virgin Hyperloop's Director of Passenger Experience and late last year was actually one of the first two people to ride on that crude Hyperloop mission. She said that despite the small size of the pod, her team wanted to bring a feeling of space and a feeling of nature inside. Whether you go up or you go down, um, there's a certain transparency of materials and a lot of windows that allow the light to filter in. And then yep. we continued that kind of uh, design phrase uh, with the skylight inside of the pod. Now that's that's a false skylight. It simul simulates natural light, but the hope is to reduce the perceived waiting time and to give people a sense of connection to the outside world, which I think is so often missing. For instance, did you see that strip running along the door there? That's not artwork, that's real moss. Both Lucian and Barra added that there was a tension for these small capsules to be inviting and accessible while still needing to get paying customers inside. Each pod only has a theoretical limit of 28 people and it will require a lot of creative engineering for the Hyperloop to reach the same capacity as a railway. Don't forget, the point here is to swallow all of the travel between two major cities, not just be a plaything for time poor one percenters. If we believe access to affordable mobility is a human right, let's embrace that. Let's let's go for it. Let's define uh, this this new hyperloop as a system that is more accessible. You know, we know that. 15% of the world's population has some form of disability or others. Well, there's so much more we could be doing in that domain. If we explore higher passenger 
head count in the pods, but do it in a respectful manner, unlike we've seen in other forms of transportation. Fundamentally, these conversations are important to have, and it's another major step on the road to us getting a working Hyperloop, but it's still going to be plenty of time before we actually get to ride in one, if it ever actually arrives.